All right, and welcome back to another video on Clash and Go, where today I want to talk about how to battle, because a lot of people like the battling sequence, and there's so much to go into with this game that I kind of want to just break this down into small bits of information so you can digest what each topic is without the video becoming too cumbersome. So in order to battle, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to need an army. So how do you create an army? Well, you go to your military plants. I've upgraded mine to level three. And what you'll do is, as you can see, you have three options. You have the info option, which gives you information over here on the left and right of the military plant. You will have options to add upgrades and that's actually a better upgrade. So I'm going to upgrade that with that fragment. And that is going to help the performance of your military plant. You can see the life of the military plant. And then what you're going to do is if you want to upgrade, that's the one in the middle. Currently, it is going to cost me 5,000 um, helium in order to upgrade. But my builders are currently already working and we'll go into building buildings and all that stuff in a later video. And then finally, you have the option to train, which I kind of touched on yesterday when I kind of did my just introduction, my first impression of the game. And these are all the different military units that I have available. Some, most of them I have not unlocked yet, but you'll see a little information in the like upper right hand corner of each of these figures so you can see that the giant how much damage per second it does the life the cost and everything that's important about it again you can add and i'll go ahead and add these wow plus 10 fragments which are i i think as far as i know are going to help improve the health the damage just the overall performance of your giants same thing here for your shooter, which they're armed with a laser rifle. It's a girl that's able to destroy ground and air attacks from a distance. Again, you can put in some upgrades. And then finally, what everybody is going to start off with is going to be the fighter. I don't think I have any more upgrades available and I will go over how to get upgrades. Like, there's a lot to cover. So just, I'm kind of giving you the bare bones of what you need to do in order to start fighting. So now that you have this screen right here, what you're going to do is you're simply just gonna tap on whatever it is you want to build. And they all have different times and different resource costs. You can see that as far as all the military army troops that I have available, they are all going to cost helium in order to build. So. If I look at my giant, you see I tap on it, it's gonna take 50 seconds in order to build a giant for me. And it, it cues it right up. So I'm gonna go ahead and build six of those. And then for my shooters, and if you look off to the left, you'll see it says 84 of 106. Giants cost more than one unit, whereas my shooters, as you can see, just cost one unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 10 of those and I'm going to do 13 of my, uh, what are those called, fighters. And that is an, that's how you build your army. Now, as time passes, you will see that my training camp, it says full, which means this training camp cannot hold any more army units. This training camp is level two, and this one is level one, so definitely might want to think about increasing those levels. So that is how you build an army. Now, the way that you're going to battle is, A, people can attack you. And if you click over here, I don't know if you can see that, but on the far left, underneath the arrow, it looks like a little notepad. You can tap on the notepad and it will tell you when you were attacked. So you can see that I was attacked three times. I lost all three. But then you can also see, if you click on attacks, how often you were the one attacking. And it shows uh, past one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the past 10 attacks, it'll also let you replay your attacks. And this little result link here is not implemented yet. 
that kind of looks like you'll be able to share that somehow. That's kind of the universal symbol for share, I believe. And uh, so there's a good way if you want to. What I do with the defenses is you can go back and rewatch to see how your opponent, where they broke through. So you kind of see where your weakness is in your battle, in your fortress. So based off of that information, you can move things around, you can fortify certain areas. If you, if you find people are exploiting the same weakness over and over, I will say early in the game, you're, you're probably going to be building up your resources pretty quickly. And so like these first couple times that I was attacked, my base didn't look anything like it did currently. And then also you saw you have the option to revenge attack your opponents. So you have that option. So there, that's one way to attack is via a revenge attack. Another way is over on the far left and then at the bottom is going to be fight. And I touched on this a little bit. You have two options. You can either do the single player campaign, which right now for me, I'm on mission seven, or you can do the raiding battle. And those are going to earn you trophies is I don't know. The problem so far that I've really had with this game is there's no like terminology. Nothing is really labeled as far as I can tell, as far as a vernacular of what to call things. So we have a universal language. So I'm as as myself and Ghost Shiny Hunter being the only two that I know of that are producing content for this, I'm just going to call them experience trophies or just trophies. And so I have 327. If you want to do a rating battle where you put trophies on the line for winning and losing. And what I mean by that is if you click search, it's going to cost me 75 titanium. And that, that number is going to increase. And it looks like you're going through time warp. But to me, this is just loading and trying to find a battle opponent. Just a word of caution at the top there, the match is gonna start in 24 seconds, whether you are ready or not. But there you go. That shows you what you can do as far as going into battle. And it shows me over here on the far left, if I, def if I get defeated, I lose 18. If I win, I gain 31. I'm gonna click finish battle and back out of this because I'm not ready to jump into battle just yet. And then as far as campaign goes, I'm on mission seven and it shows me how much loot is available. So up for grabs is gonna be just over 2000 titanium and almost 1800 helium. You tap on your attack button. That, again, you're gonna go through the warp. And this is the base that is causing me a lot of problems at the moment. A main difference between the player versus player attacking someone's base and the missions is I don't have a timer. There's nothing here counting down to tell me you better hurry up and go. To deploy your troops, you can see right there in the middle, it says touch or tap and hold to deploy troops. If you hold it, I feel like it just throws them all out there or maybe because I can't, my fingers are a little bit fatter <laughs> for lack of a better word. But I feel like if I tap and hold, maybe there's some kind of a, a counter that happens that says how many I'm dropping, which would be very useful when you're deploying vast armies because your army is huge. This army is that I'm working with is not that big. Or you can just single tap and it'll drop individual units down. So what I'm gonna do is, and I've had no success defeating this, I'm probably like 0 for 5, is the first thing I'm gonna do is you tap on which of your army units you want to release, and then over here on the bottom right is your hero, mine is level 6 now. Maybe I've leveled up to the point that I can actually attack this base successfully. And one thing that I haven't figured out yet is exactly how to determine where my army is going to be attacking. For me, I want them always attacking the things that are shooting back at them. <laughs> but sometimes I'll find if I don't place my units down properly, they'll go start looting instead of attacking the turrets and or the lasers. And so that's never good because the goal is to knock out the command center in the middle there. But in order to do that, I think the best thing to do is instead of looting right off the bat is to knock out their defenses because then you can loot while the timer goes down. So I'm gonna open up with, I think I'm going to just drop three of these guys and see they, they just kind of do their own thing. 
We're gonna drop three of those. We're gonna go five over there, five over there, and then we're gonna just try to bum rush. And then I'm gonna send in my hero over here. And let's see if I can just overpower my this this robot here. Um See, I, I didn't want those last three army units to go that direction. I actually wanted them to attack this turret here. It looks like I got through the wall, and if I can get rid of that plasma gun in the middle, which I did, I feel like this should be a pretty successful raid right here. This one turret isn't going to knock out all of my my, uh, my army, and we're going to get 100% damage. So I finally got through that relatively easily, actually just kind of overwhelmed and because I was building an army on the backside because if you know, remember my training centers here were full be, but because I was building an army previously that I set up for you guys you can see that now I'm ready to go fight another battle if the need arises so again what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on fight and this time I'm going to go search for a ranked battle and Resonator has a level nine hero. I don't know that I can actually take this out, but again, the same strategy. I'm going to deploy one, two, three there, one, two, three there. I'm going to deploy five over here and five up there. And then I didn't let my hero, I'm probably gonna, I'm actually going to lose this because I didn't let my hero heal. And so he can't come into battle. Um, we're gonna take six of those. We'll drop six down here. Like I said, most likely I'm going to lose this battle because my hero's not gonna be there for cleanup work. But actually I'm, I'm faring fairly well. My opponent, is in the middle of building a wall around his entire base there, but left the backside completely exposed. As you can see on the far left, the available loot is going down in sync with my loot going up. If I lose this, I lose 27 trophies, which means that I probably should have won this. And if I win, I only gain 19. Got one star for 50% damage, two stars. So I've already claim the victory and I've neutralized all of my opponent's defenses so now I have a minute and 44 to loot as much as possible and that's gonna not really play a factor the time early in the game but as bases get bigger and more complex the, the time is definitely gonna play a factor in how much you're able to loot your opponent's bases now I know that I said yesterday that when you get looted, you lose resources, but I don't necessarily know that you actually lose resources. I think your opponent just gains resources. You saw that I was attacked three times, twice overnight while I was sleeping, and I don't feel like I actually lost anything because when I woke up, everything seemed to be in order. Total damage is 100%. I gained a total of 7,200 titanium, just over 8,100 um, helium and then the 19 trophies and it shows me which troops I used if I go back to the home button we're gonna warp back to my base and you'll see that my military is completely depleted or depleted and so then I will just repeat that process and go with whoops go with six and ten and don't use what I'm doing as the end all be all, as far as building a military, I've just found for where I'm at in the game, this works best for me to send in some heavy armor guys right at the beginning, drop some shooters, some snipers behind them, and then using the ground units once the walls are broken down a little bit to come in and do the mop up work. It, that's, that is what I have found to work for me. If, if you are familiar with Clash of Clans, you probably know the strategies a lot better than I do having never played Clash of Clans. And so a lot of this, you are gonna be ahead of the game. Anyways, like I said, I just wanted to do a quick little video 
on how to battle and clash and go. And let me know down in the comments below. What do you think of this game? Give it a try. One other thing that I did want to say is I did complete my clan citadel. And if I go up here and click on my name, my clan has started. And as you can see, I'm the only member of it. So I am taking applications to be in the Pokey Fodder clan. If that, if this game is something that interests you and you think you're going to play it for a while, you have to, you have to get to the point where you can actually be a part of a clan. So I think you have to build your Citadel before you can join my clan. But if you are a serious player and you think that you are going to be sticking with this game for a little while and you want to join a clan, let me know. That's all I've got for today. I hope you guys enjoy this quick little tour and how to video on battling and, uh, I'll do more videos. Let me know in the comments below. What do you guys, if, if you are playing the game or if you're interested in the game, what do you guys want to know more about so that I can kind of tailor any of these videos that I do to, to the player base, to my fans who want to know how to do something specifically. Like I said, there's no manual. So a lot of this is going to be me just kind of going out and exploring and listening to the community uh, as far as how to play, what the different fragments are, what the different resources are. And so just want to tailor these videos to best help you. Thanks for watching and until next time.